Hey pilots, it's your product specialist Wesley from here at Motion RC, and today we're doing something a little different. This is going to be the build assembly series of the Nexa PA22 Piper Tri Pacer. Uh, today we're going to be assembling the wings. I have gone ahead and put one wing together already before we got started. As you can see, we have our servos installed. Uh, I did vary away from the uh, recommended uh, products to use in this kit, and you can also, uh, instead of using the high-tech servos that are on the website, I actually used our free wing 30 gram digital metal gear servos uh, that come in a lot of our other uh, aircraft. I'm gonna hold these up to the camera for a second so y'all can see that part number. And I'm using these all around the aircraft except for one. I do have a reversed version of this, which is designated by an R on the packaging. Uh, and you'll also notice that it has a uh, white, red, and black wire versus the other ones all have the yellow, uh, brown, and black wire like this one. So that's the easiest way right there to tell your two servo types apart on free wings. The reversed ones have the white, red, and black and the uh, standard 30 grams have this color, brown, red, yellow. So anyway, we're gonna be using these around the model. So four in total on the wings today. We have three standards, two are for the ailerons, one for one side of the flap and one for the other side of the flap. That way when we Y harness all this stuff together here in a minute, the flaps actually work the same direction and the ailerons work the opposite direction. If you want to put every surface into its own channel, you can do away with those Y harnesses, but it makes you need more channels on the aircraft. And so this is just a way to save more channels. If we Y harness everything in the wings, we only need one channel for each item. Anyway, uh, the other thing that's going to be a little bit different on this is the 30 gram servos are a touch bigger than micro and a touch smaller than standard. And the cutouts on the wings here, are actually a standard servo or a micro servo. So what we're gonna do is just cut them out just a little bit to make that fit in there. Doesn't hurt anything to do that, uh, but like I said, if a customer is willing to do this little bit extra work, you can save a little bit of money on your servos. I love these free wing servos. They come in all of our free wing models that we trust, and uh, I've not had any issues with putting them in these Nexa airplanes. So uh, the cool thing before we get started on this exact Nexa kit, is the hinges for the wings come pre-glued right out of the box. So just make sure you tug on them and make sure there's none that are loose that you could re-glue before we get started. Uh, but yeah, as they come out of the box, the pinned hinges for the flaps are in there and the uh, CA wicking hinges on the ailerons are in there. No damage there. Uh, the other thing I'll warn you is these are a little bit taller than a micro servo. So when you put that in there, you might see it pushing just a little bit on the covering here at the top, like I did. You can actually see it's just pushing on it just ever so slightly. Uh, so just as a warning, other than that, they fit in there fine. And you can see uh, they're gonna work just fine. Let's see, there you go. So anyway, let's get started on our actual assembly of this airplane. The other thing I'm gonna go on and do is I have a come get em wire. This comes in a lot of the free wing model kits. Uh, if you don't, the aircraft does have string in the wing to pull your uh, servos down into the wing with. But since I have that rod and it fits in here so nice, I'm gonna go on and just knock this off, which has got our little string attached. And I'm gonna go on and knock off the other side because we're not gonna use it, we're just gonna use that wire. Sometimes on these little planes, it's just easier to use the wire. They are glued in, so just take them. Grab something to snap that off with. Ever so slightly. Like that. Now we should be able to pull that wire up and out of the wing like that. Hi yeah, we don't need that where we're going. Now, before we get started, if you have an old towel or a piece of carpet from Home Depot like I do here, I went and got some outdoor carpet. Uh, I like to assemble aircraft on top of this carpet. That way we don't ding up the uh, covering. We try and keep our dings to as minimum as we can here. So first thing we need to do, 
grab one of our servos and let's start trying to get these fitted into the wing. So what I like to do is just kind of hold them right there in the middle of that servo pocket and then trace a line around the outside of them so that I know what I need to cut out to make these servos fit. There we go. Now I can see what I actually need to cut out to. It's not a lot. You could use a Dremel um, or you can use a knife like I'm going to score it and cut it. So be careful doing this. Don't push your knife down through the wing and poke a hole in it. That would be bad. So what I like to do is take it just like this and I score my line first a couple times all the way around. Just like that. And now we're going to take and we're going to plunge the knife down into the wing carefully. And we're going to work it down the wing. Hopefully you can see that. I have to hold it a certain way to put pressure on it without tearing up the wing. There you go. And I'm going to plunge the knife down into the wing, being careful not to plunge it too far as to hit the other side of the covering. And now we're just going to cut that out. Same thing going this way. If it breaks off, that's okay. It should break off on your scoring is the good news. And if we need to at the end, we'll take our Dremel and just clean it up just ever so slightly. All right, let's grab something to pull all this out with. There you go. Make sure there's nothing underneath where the servo pocket's gonna be, otherwise the servo may touch it. Now I'm gonna take my Dremel and just clean that up a little bit. And now we need to test fit our servo. Now we know we're gonna go on and put that servo in the wing, so I might as well go on and get our servo lead down into it. And like I said, now I'm going to take this come get them wire. I'm going to feed it down where I want my servo wire to come out until I see it land right here. And uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but there is my come get them wire. Now I can simply just put my servo in there, servo lead, I should say, and pull her out. like so. Now if you want, some customers may choose to. Um, I actually got it stuck on there. There we go. Some customers may choose to put a servo saver here. There's a little blue thing that we actually sell here from our Benchcraft line. So if you want to, this is one of our little servo links. You can actually take these and they clip on around like that, and that keeps your servo wire from ever disconnecting. Now, I've never had one pull off on one of these little planes, and I actually don't plan on ever taking these wings on and off of this little guy, so I'm just gonna leave it off for this time, but on most of my big models, I do that. So now that we've got that in there, we can test fit our servo and see if we need to uh, sand or fine tune a little bit, and it's still just a little tight around the case. No problem though, we got our Dremel tool. There we go. So now we're gonna set that down in there. As you can see, it's a nice tight fit. Now we need to grab a drill. You'll notice when you open up your free wing or your high tech, whoever, uh, that you're gonna get a load of screws in there. The ones that are a little bit different go in the top. They're a machine threaded. I drop it. They go like that right there though. 
and then the coarser thread ones are what's going to actually hold it into the wing. Now, you need to pilot drill these. If you just put the screws down into the wing right here, you're going to break the wood out. So, let's grab, I'm going to do a 1 16th inch drill bit, 1 16th. We're going to pilot drill the first one. There we go. So we're going to hold our servo right in the middle where we want it. We're going to pilot drill that hole. Now that we've got that pilot drilled, we're going to grab a screwdriver and put that first screw in. like that. Remember you're going into wood so don't like super crank it. You just want it down until they stop. Now we can go in and pilot drill our other four holes. Careful not to let the drill fall through the wing. Because when you go through, if you push too hard, you're going to go right through the other side of the wing and poke a big hole in it. Just like that. Now we're going to take our other three screws and get those in. Just like that. Now we have our first wing servo installed. I'm going to keep the one horn we're going to use. I'm going to use the longer one. Not that I'd really need it. You could probably use the shorter one and get away with it. I actually may go back and change it out on my other flap. All right, just for safekeeping, I'm going to put my servo horn on there. I do still need to center our servos before we actually hook anything up. But just so we don't lose anything as we assemble, I'm going to just stick that in there and loosely screw down that top screw just so it's set in there ready for us when we come back to it. All right, so now we need to put our flap servo in. It's going to be exactly the same process as this one. Uh, I will say, you can see right here in the covering where our horn is going to set. We want to make sure we favor that servo to the opposite side so that it's going to be in a straight line to the arm, if that's making sense to you guys. And it will as we build it. See, I did it off to one side of the servo. So this one, it's closer to this side. That way, as that servo moves, it moves away from it and it's not right in line with it. Same thing here, you can see on the aileron on this side, I have it where it comes straight out to the arm, and so there's no uh, off-centered. If it was over here, you'd have it at an odd angle. So you just need to make sure you watch that, especially if you're putting a servo in that's a different size than the hole, that you make sure you put it in line with it. Or not in line, but offset to one side, excuse me. All right, let's grab our next servo. This time I'm gonna put my reverse servo in. Take our come get them wire, put our servo lead in just like we did before, and take her right out the side, just like that. Oh, barely. Just need to make it just a hair bit deeper. Oh, it flipped. Hopefully the servo covers it. Ah, oh, there we go. Well, I slipped. Whoops. Happens. Good news is, before we put that on there, the airplane does 
actually come with a piece of patch material. Now that I had that, oops. Let's see if we can pull that back up. I'm just gonna cut a little tiny piece of it there for that corner. Not crucial or anything, but let's just cover that back up. Since I did that, oops. Happens to the best of us. Good news is it's right underneath that servo. So you're really never gonna see it, but I did have that slip. We're just gonna take that little piece of repair stuff. And we'll mash that servo in there and you'll never even see it. It's like it never even happened. Whoops. All right, let's get this servo mounted. said for safekeeping we'll stick our machine screw up there in the top just so we don't lose it all right cool chugging along good today guys chugging along good all right for the next step we need to put our control horns in now when you look down on the airplane it may be hard to see in the camera right now all right when you're looking at it under the right lighting, you can actually see where the horn goes. It's right there. So when you look down from your uh, servo onto your control surface, you'll actually see that little hole. What we need to do is cut that little hole out and test fit our servo connector. So what I'm gonna do, or not servo connector, our servo horn. I'm gonna cut that out and you can go just a little bigger and all we're doing is trying to cut the plastic or not the plastic but the uh, covering itself not the wood on this part to unveil our little piece now you can see it right there all I was trying to do is just cut around that to get that covering off so we can reveal the hole now we can take our little horns and I guarantee you these are going to be super duper tight but that's okay we want them tight these are the horns we're going to use now there you go now sometimes to make it a little easier I like to take come on focus in right here and I like to just nip the corners ever so slightly like that this makes it a whole lot easier to get them down in that hole. So if you'll cut them into a little V like that, it makes it a whole lot easier to get them in the hole themselves. So right now we're gonna just test fit. Pretty tight. Take and run this around in there a little bit. Just a little bit. We don't wanna go crazy. The tighter these are, the better. All right, it's gonna go down on this next one when I push it. So, I like to use a little bit of medium CA. We're gonna push that in here. Ooh, that was a lot. Now we're gonna just take it and push it all the way in. Just like that. Let that set up until it's dry. We can see that. Now we're gonna do the same thing up here on the aileron. So I'm gonna move everything out of the way and let's do that one too. Now, 
Guys, we need to let this set for a little bit. We don't want to mess with these control horns until they are good and dry because we don't want to accidentally break that CA bond until it's actually set up. So I'm going to let this set here for about 10, 15 minutes, then come back and we're going to put the horns on after that. All right, so at this point, we have our servos installed, our horns in. Now it's time to put our actual control linkages in. Now the kit comes with these little guys right here. I'm not sure if that's going to focus. You can see these. Uh, what they are is you put the wire through them and then screw the set screw down on them and they hold everything tight. Now, personally, I feel like these are a lot to use and, and they kind of have a weak point of coming apart. And I usually just get rid of them. And the way I do that, I will show you now, is with a pair of these. This is called a Z-Bend flyer. Now we have a different version here at Motion RC that actually clips to your bench. Uh, they're from Dubro, uh, and it's called, I believe, the Easy Bender. But uh, I've had these for a long time, and I use them quite often when working on these to get rid of all that other stuff. And I'll show you how these work. If you want to use these, you literally just screw them in there, put your wire through, and set screw them down. But like I said, this is just something I personally like, and so I'm going to do it this way. Fun thing about balsa, build it how you choose to. So I already know I need to drill out my hole. I'm gonna use the center hole on the aileron. And the center hole on the flap. Like so. I also want to make sure that I build it the same way as the other wing. So I went to the third hole out. Let's go on and drill that out. And then I went to the innermost hole on the flaps. There we go. Now, the way we want to use one of these Z-benders we're gonna pop our control horn on. And then we're gonna come up here to our servo horn. And if you haven't yet centered your servos, you want it to where your arm is straight out and this one is straight down. You wanna make it match the other side. So if you hold these up here, just to show you. There we go. I've got my arm set exactly the same for both sides of the wing because we want to make them both identical. So we know we're trying to go right there. We're gonna hold our aileron neutral out here, take a marker, make a mark where our bin needs to be. And I have also, hang on there. I also have my link screwed in halfway. That way I have adjustment in and out if I need it. Now that we know where our bin needs to be, we simply line that up where we want it and make the bend. Being careful not to force this too hard. If you do this too hard, you'll snap it off. We just want that to make that nice little bend like that right there. Now I'm going to take me a set of wire cutters. And nip it off. Like so. And now that can never come loose. So, now did I go to the bottom or to the top? I went to the bottom. So let's make it match the other side. I need to pull my horn back off. Set our screw aside. We're going to take our easy link that we just made, pop that around like that, put that into the neutral position, and now we will line that up and pop it on. Just like so. And that's as easy as making 
that control linkage is. Now for the flap, it's a lot shorter. But same thing, we're gonna take it, clip it in, ouch, those metal things hurt sometimes. We're gonna make our mark, like so. Take our Z-benders. Yeah. And snap it off. Same thing as before. We can go on and put our screw back in the other side of the wing too. Oops. Now, let's go ahead and pull this one out. Pop our little easy linker in there. Just like so. I'll leave that loose. Snap this guy in. I'm going to center the servo because I never did. If you don't have a servo center, we sell them here at Motion RC. Highly recommend having one if you're going to do a lot of balsa building. So now I know that it's in the neutral position. do a quick test. I don't want it to go to both extremes, so let's go into manual mode. Now we can check it. Beautiful. Cool. Last thing to do is just kind of hook them up, make sure everything is working correctly. So we know we're going to Y harness both the ailerons and the uh, Flaps. So now we need to just test everything to make sure we have it all hooked up correct. So let's grab our Y harness. Let's check our ailerons first. We can do this using our servo checker. Plug that guy in. And we have our ailerons going opposite directions like we want them. Perfect. So that's good. Now we need to check our flaps. Plug them in to the Y harness. I'm gonna just tap them for a second to make sure they're not at an extreme. There we go. All right. And they should move evenly together. And they do. Cool. And that shows us that we've got them hooked up right. Perfect. Well guys, that completes our first assembly day on the uh, Nexa PA 22. Um, like I said, nice easy day here. Uh, definitely take your time on these kits. I like to split them up into a couple of days when I put one together. Uh, and like I said, today I just wanted to tackle the wings, get them assembled. Uh, I always start with the wings. It seems like one of the easiest things that really feels like you completed something big on that day when you do all your servos and your linkages and everything. Uh, the only thing we didn't install is the flying wires. I'm going to wait till we have the fuselage because it doesn't look like there's holes out here. It looks like they're gonna just be wood screwed in. So I wanna be able to attach the flying wires to the fuselage, then find where they're gonna go out on the wings. 
Uh, well, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Be looking out. We're going to have a next part to the series where we take the beautiful fuselage next and get that put together. And uh, then we're going to be putting the motor on it in another step and then get it all together and check everything over before we go out and fly this together here on MotionRC.com. Uh, as always, guys, if you're interested in anything from land, sea, to air, we have it here at Motion RC. Make sure you keep on coming back. Hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this build series. We're going to get more of them out. And we've got more airplanes coming to the channel every day. So without further ado, guys, I'm going to let you go. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.